in the last video we have seen how do we create a project in Eclipse which is a web project in this case and we have also created one page which is index.html so what we are trying to do here is we are taking two values the moment you click on submit we want to call add but what exactly this add is the purpose here is just to add these two numbers that's it we can do that with JavaScript but here I want to use a server side technology and we want to use Java and the only option you have is servlet. So what we will do here is let's create a servlet. But how do we do that? It's very simple actually. Just right click on your project and say new. Here I will select a class. But you might be wondering we are making a servlet right? It should be something new. Uh, not exactly. We can create a simple class and that will behave like a servlet. I know you don't trust me. I will click on class here. I will create a simple class which will add two numbers. So we will call this as a add servlet. Again, you can use any name. I love this name, which is add servlet. I will go with that. And here in the package, I will mention the package name. I would say com.telisco. You can use any package name, but then you have to make sure that your package name is unique. And that's why we always use a reverse of your domain name because your domain names are unique. So of course your package name will also be unique. And here I will click on finish. A very simple class. So you can see we have a very simple class, which is doing nothing. Now, in order to make a servlet, you just need to do one thing. There are different ways of creating a servlet. We will talk about the lifecycle of servlet and what are the complete hierarchy. Time being just to make it simple, I will use a class name which is, so we just have to extend a class which is HTTP servlet. So you just need to extend HTTP servlet and your job is done. The moment you extend a servlet class, your class becomes a servlet. So you just have to extend HTTP servlet. Okay, now this sounds cool. The next problem is when you click on the submit button, it will call add, right? And we are expecting when you call add, it will call add servlet. Will it be happening automatically? That's a different thing. We will talk about that later. But imagine if this class is working, if you want to perform any operation, you need methods. That's what we have learned in Java. If you want to perform, if you want to do any, any task, you use methods. Now here as well, I have to use a method, but which one? Now, servlet says if you want to use a method name, you can use a service method because servlet is a server component, right? And what server does, it provides service. So we can use a method which service. Can I use some other method name? The answer is no. If you want to make it working, you need to use a service method name. Now, service is a method which belongs to a servlet lifecycle. So of course, you have to go with this method name. So it's a service and here I want to accept the request from the user and I want to do some task. Now the question would be how a user will send a request. I mean, that's okay. So well, let's say if you got a request here, how a user will able to send data and this servlet is able to receive data. As we have seen in the video, the theory video, which we have done, whenever you work with service method or any server, you have to work with two different object. One is the request object and second is a response object. So you have to pass a request object here. So I will say HTTP servlet request object and RDQ. The thing is you don't have to actually create this object by yourself. This object will be created by Tomcat. You just need to get a reference of it. So you don't have to say a new keyword or nothing, something like that. You'd simply say HTTP servlet request and you say RDQ and then we'll say HTTP servlet response. So basically we need these two objects here. Now using the request object, you can fetch data from the client. And using the response object, you can send the response to the client. So it's all about request and response, right? Now in this method service, once I got this object, what I will do is I will try to get data from the user. Now a user is sending two values, right? So I would say int i, where you will have the first value. So I would say req. E now this request object will have your data. So I can say get parameter because when a user is passing values, a user is passing parameters. And I would say I want to accept the first value, but what to mention here? Now, as a user, you are sending two values, right? You are sending values in num1 and num2. The first value is there in num1. So I would say I want to fetch value from num1. Okay. Now there's one simple problem. Get parameter will give you a string. What we are expecting here is an integer. So we have to convert that, right? And the way you do that is by using parsint, our favorite method which is parsint. And this string will be getting converted into integer. The same thing can be done for the second variable. I would say, uh, I mean, J here. 
So this is j int j integer dot percent and here I will say num2. Now you can see we got both the values. We got i and we got j. The only thing we have to do now is add them. And the way you do that is by saying int k equal to i plus j, a simple co Java concept. Okay, now the question would be, we have done with the addition, how do I print it? So normally in co Java, what we do is we say system.out.println and I would say uh, result is, and I will print the value of k. So I'm expecting that this should work. Now will this work? Let's try. I will run this application. I will go back to index. I will say run as run on server. So you can see we got this page here and in this page I will I will say 34 and 21 or 12. So the answer should be 46. Let me just click on submit. Oh, it's not working. It says 404, our favorite error, right? And the, there's one thing which you have to observe. Look at the address bar. We are sending our ad request, that is perfect. And we are also passing the values. So we are passing the value of num1 and num2 in the address bar. So this is called as a query string. So query string is a part where you can send your data from a client to a server. So let's go back to the server. Now the question would be why you are not able to call this ad servlet. For the obvious reason, right? If I, if I look at this ad, you, I mean, when you click on the submit, you are, you're calling ad, right? So you are calling ad and you have a servlet name, which is ad servlet. Don't you think it will get confused between these two? We have an ad servlet here and we have ad here. To solve this problem, let's try to understand the flow. The moment you click on submit, now since you are using Tomcat, Tomcat will say, okay, you are requesting for a page. The request will go to Tomcat, but Tomcat don't know that this, this is the class you have to call. Now it will ask you, hey programmer, you, a user is trying to call ad servlet. You must have defined the flow, right? So whenever a user call add, it should call add servlet where you have configured it. And unfortunately, we have not done that yet. So Tomcat will look for this file, which is web.xml. Web.xml is also called as a deployment descriptor. This is where you will have all the configuration. So if I open this, you can see we don't have any configuration for the servlet. This thing we don't need as of now. I, will, I can remove all this stuff. That, that was a welcome page. What I want here is I want to configure my servlet. So I want to say whenever a user requests for add, I want to call add servlet. And the way you do that is by putting two tags here. One is a servlet tag and the next one is servlet mapping tag. You just need to use these two tags. That's it. A servlet tag and a servlet mapping tag. Now in, inside servlet tag, you have two sub tags here. So one is a servlet name and the second one is servlet class. In the servlet mapping, again, you have to define two tags. One is the servlet name and the next one is URL pattern. Now this is unique, right? We have a servlet class name. That makes sense. We have a URL pattern because you are sending a request, right? So if you look at the address bar, this is a basically a URL. So that makes sense. But why we have servlet name? It's because in your application, you might have multiple servlets. May not be one, maybe 10, 12, 50, 100. You're not sure. Now for every servlet, you need to create a servlet tag and a servlet mapping tag. So there will be a confusion which servlet mapping is linked with which servlet. And that's where we use the servlet name. So these two are linked. So they should have the same name. And I would say the name is ABC. Again, you can go with any name. We, time when we are going for ABC. You have to make sure that if one pair, which is servlet and servlet mapping, they should have the same name. If you have another servlet, you'll be having another pair of this. Now, what about the servlet name or the servlet class? The servlet class is the servlet class name we have to mention, which is add servlet. And the URL pattern is your add. So slash add because you're requesting for an add request. So add will call add servlet. But then we have to provide a fully qualified class name. And when I say fully qualified class name, it means with the package name. So the package name is com.telisco. So you have to mention fully qualified name. So a class name with a package. So com.telisco.addservlet. Now everything seems good. It should work now. Now how to verify? Let's right click on your server. Right click on your server. Say restart. Go back to your browser. Let's refresh this page. I will say submit. Oh, something has happened. You can see there is no error. Okay, so we have done with the first step. At least we are not getting any error. If I go back to the browser or the Eclipse, you can see we got the answer. But the answer is coming in the console. But why on the console? 
uh, for a very simple reason you in the code if you can see we are printing the data on the console so whenever you say system.out.println you always print data on a console i don't want to print it on a console i want to print on the page the, the client page you can see we got a page here but this page doesn't have the data now to understand this question arise who is sending this page it's actually a servlet servlet is sending that page in the format of response object now in order to write the data on response object you cannot say system.out.println you have to say that is response.getwriter.println so basically you are taking the object of response and then you are fetching a writer object of it and you are saying println I know this looks confusing so what I will do is I will try to create this object outside so I will say response.getwriter so if you can observe this get writer, get writer, get writer returns an object of print writer. So I will say print writer. This is what it returns. So I will say print writer out equal to rs dot get writer. We have to import the package for print writer first of all. And here instead of using get response dot get writer, I will say out. So what you're doing is you are printing data on a response object. This is the object which goes from the client from the server to client. Now it is throwing an exception. It says it might throw IO exception. Uh, so you can say throws that's one of the best option you can go for so I would say add throws declaration our job is done and it should work now the data should be printed on the client machine I will go back here right click on the server and say restart it's doing something let me just go back to my P browser and I will say refresh click on submit can you see that we got the output on the client page this is what we are expecting so this is how you create a simple servlet which will accept two values and it will add those and it will print data on the web page. Just to repeat, we have created a class, a simple class in, the, in any package you want. And you just need to extend a HTTP servlet class in which you just have to define a method which is service. You cannot go for any other name other than service. You cannot say ABC, PQR. Yes, we do have some two extra methods we can use, but time in, let's focus on service. It takes two objects, request and response in the same sequence and then you need to uh, fetch those two values add those two values and you can print it you can do any, you can do anything you want but this is what we have done in this example so i hope you understood how to get a, how to get a servlet and how to send a response so in the next video we'll try to do something else with the servlet maybe we can create multiple servlets so that's it everyone thank you so much for watching everyone